Well, good day, Tubes. How's she going? So I found an interesting website here on the Tillotson carburetor that's on that TS400 that we were been working on. And, and I think and, and I thought I figured out why it's not running right. Now we have to go through that carburetor again and do some more cleaning or try to replace it maybe if it's that bad. But um, anyways, they've got some really good diagrams on here that I found too. And it shows you all the bits and pieces. Now I think this is basically, hmm, this might be the exact carb. 26, what is that? 20 high speed mixture screw. So this one doesn't have... It's got a fixed jet high speed on it, which is inside of the carburetor, under the Welsh plug apparently. And it seemed to be running fine fast, but not running run fine slow. So 13, I think, is the idle mixture screw. Okay, so where is the low, low speed? This is not exactly the same carburetor, I don't think. Anyways, high speed... So is it not showing me a low speed? Anywho, um, so there was some interesting things here and things to check. It kind of shows the operation of things here. So um, this is the low speed here, I believe. Uh, secondary fuel idle fuel discharge. Yeah, I, primary primary idle fuel discharge port. So I think. It was this screw that I took out, and this was all gummed up in here. And it's probably all gummed up in here, too, with crap and stuff. I would imagine that what was happening was when you're trying to start it, it's trying to draw some fuel out of these with the choke. Because once you got this choke down, it sucks it out of these two instead of the main. Um, I think that's right, anyways. But I think what it was doing, instead of sucking it out of these ones here just to get it going, it was sucking more than it than it needed out of here kind of thing. So I think, anyways, it's my theory of it. So, um, so this is choke here. So when the choke's down, it looks like it's trying to just suck it out of here. And I think it was sucking too much, and it was sucking it out of the main here, and then just flooding the thing. Because it technically shouldn't be sucking anything out of here, I don't believe, until you open the choke up. But anyways. Um, idling operation, yeah. So, it wouldn't idle at all. So, I think both of these little holes here, they're super, super tiny holes. You have to basically run a... Try to run a screen through it or get the needle out and I'll run it through the ultrasonic cleaner kind of thing and that should help clean things out um, but yeah the uh, idling wouldn't idle at all so I think both of these are bunged up and it was trying to run itself off of the high speed the whole time which it was drawing way too much fuel out of there kind of thing right because it should only draw out of there when you're hammering on it right and you're really sucking hard and it will actually suck a bit out of both sides but anyways so there's high speed operation. Yeah, so here I believe is intermediate and then, well, it doesn't give me a diagram for high speed. Uh, anyways, it looks like it's sucking out of all three ports kind of thing there. So, and of course, there's your diaphragm and there's your, you know, it pumps and opens the needle valve here. There could be an issue in here too, maybe. We'll have to look and see, but uh, anyways. As a throttle shutter progressively opens from intermediate position to full open position, the air velocity through the venturi increases and the fuel is metered up through the high speed mixture orifice and main fuel discharge port in accordance with requirements of the engine. So how fast you're running it. The action of the main diaphragm is the same as previously described with suction required to operate the diaphragm being transmitted through the main fuel discharge port. So I think because it was, these weren't allowing fuel through, it was trying to activate this thing all the time basically and it was just flooding the thing it was putting way too much in because you can see even by this diagram that the size of the, the hole here for the high speed versus the two little low speeds right very very different so um this is showing you the little needle there you gotta adjust this little plate if it's not perfectly level pretty cool website here 
So down here, though, I noticed uh, engine when well, not engine when well, idle incorrect idle adjustment, which we couldn't even get it to idle at all. Um, idle discharge port or channels clogged. Bloat with compressed air or a compressed air if not available. Clean and flush with gasoline. So I think these guys here are plugged on that carburetor. By the looks of way the needle come out. And that crap could be even all the way down here. So we might have to do a bunch of cleaning on that thing or just try to replace it because sometimes they're just as cheap to replace them. Uh, maybe not for this till it's in, but anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, diaphragm lever set incorrectly. I'm pretty sure it was fine, but we'll have to recheck that too. Throttle shutter cocked in the throttle bore causing fast idle. We didn't get any idle, so dirty nozzle check valve or outlet screen which we cleaned wash plug covering the idle discharge port does not seal this causes the engine to idle with idle mixture shut off okay so we don't didn't get it to idle at all so engine runs out lean carburetor runs rich with high speed mixture screw shut off <laughs> that's not good um engine will not accelerate wait we got it to accelerate so that was good carburetor floods here we go Dirt or foreign particles preventing need, uh, inlet needle from seeding. So that's this guy, the inlet needle from seeding. So there might be even some junk under there, and it's just letting it kind of run right through. So shouldn't be any junk in there because we clean out the entire fuel system. But diaphragm lever spring not seated or on dimple level on level dimple. So in here, there's a little dimple thingy here that it could technically not be touching it could be just holding it open diaphragm improperly improperly installed in carburetor replace diaphragm or correct installation so i'm pretty sure we did that right um because it shows you well, was there a diagram here yeah, not really there isn't really a exploded view of everything but uh, anyways i do have a picture of it so I think that's what's been going on, and that's why it wasn't running too well on idle at all. So we need to get this out, get everything pulled out. All this can come out all again. All these tops and bottoms and the metering diaphragm, this diaphragm can come out. The metering fuel pump side, sorry, and then the diaphragm will take that out. Get rid of all that stuff and um, get her cleaned up again. Maybe see if she'll run off of that, so... I think that's what's going on is this these are clogged up so when the engine is idling throttle shutter is partially cracked the engine suction is transmitted through the primary idle fuel discharge port to the fuel chamber side of the main diaphragm via the there's a lot of stuff it's got to go through here right holy cow via the idle fuel supply channel again the main diaphragm is forced upwards by atmospheric pressure depressing the inlet control lever up overcoming inlet tension spring pressure and permitting fuel to enter through the inlet seat and filling the fuel chamber that's just under the diaphragm here kind of thing and this is your fuel chamber here uh, it's not very big but this is you know where everything sits that's flipped upside down normally when we're working on it and then you're trying to there's a screw um, that bar right here and then the screw kind of goes here to the big screw so all this open area in here under the diaphragm and all here's all the where the fuel would sit so um filling the fuel chamber of fuel is drawn up through the idle mixture screw orifice and delivering to the engine through primary engine idle discharge port so it's not able to do that that's why it was hard to start i think too because it was sucking so much out of here when it shouldn't have been really right so but anyway so that's my theory on it we'll get her cleaned out hopefully and get these ports open again see if we can get something down there or maybe put it through the ultrasonic cleaner maybe that'll help for a bit some nice hot warm water and stuff and uh see if that'll help but anyways i just want to show you that found a really cool website here until it's in website so thanks again for watching we'll see if we can get that figured out oh adjustment instructions open the high speed mixture screw one and a quarter turns open the high idle mixture screw one turn it's good to know that when we reset things so uh, turn and a quarter this doesn't have a high speed though it's only got the low speed on this carburetor but anyways okay thanks again for watching catch is all later and you guys have a good one